very good morning, good evening, and greetings for the day to all my audience here, because we have people from different origin and different countries across the globe. And I would like to welcome all of you on board to today to discuss uh, about test automation tools, as you are looking at the title on your screen right now. And already would have started populating a lot of questions in your mind that, okay, what is that we will be expecting? What is that this gentleman is going to cover in our discussion today? And probably, of course, you may have some predefined questions with you, which you would like to share with me and get resolved with. So do not worry about that. We will have enough time to look into your queries and answer all of them if time permits within the schedule what we have for today's webinar. So quickly getting started with my introduction on the screen right now. Uh, myself, Neesh Kumar Singh, I'm basically an uh, automation specialist. And yes, I deal with a kind of consulting job right now where I am involved with uh, supporting organization with uh, process improvement, automation implementation, and guiding organizations to assist them with respect to how automation can be beneficial to any organization. And that's how this topic has come into the consideration today that we will be trying to understand what is test automation is all about and all related you know, information about that. So yes, we have a lot to explore and understand. Additionally, I uh, have got a lot of certifications as well throughout this journey, which includes uh, ISTQB certification, some from foundations, some from advanced, and also from some of the tool certifications, including HP, most of the leading softwares, and additional to that is also a Microsoft certified trainer. Um, currently, I deal with, uh, as I told you, project and process consultation, gap analysis, team alignment, etc. And uh, also have delivered a lot of training and workshops across 26 plus countries and for more than 10,000 plus participants. So yes, I have a lot of things and extensive knowledge to share with you today. So do not miss this opportunity to make sure that at least you take most of the things away from this webinar. At the same time, do let me know about your queries. I'll be happy if I can answer that. To get started, the very first thing is to understand about the agenda, what we will be covering and what you can expect in this webinar today. We are talking about introduction to automation. What is an automation tool? Different automation tools available in the market. What are automation frameworks, which really excites any automation engineer and might be sometimes troubling to an automation engineer as well. At the same time, we'd also like to explore more about what's the benefits and risk of using a tool. Well, most of the time, people understand that there are only benefits of using any tool, but uh, there are also a lot of risk involved. And of course, how to introduce a tool into an organization. You might be the one who may be you know, the key person of the organization to introduce or suggest a tool to the organization. Then I would be telling you more about that how being an individual contributor, you can suggest your organization to roll out a tool into the organization. And of course, last but not the least, we will be having an open window to talk about your questions and answers to that. To begin with our discussion today, or this webinar today, I would like to start with the introduction to automation. Now, what is automation all about? Now, when you talk about the automation, it's obviously to automate, but what is automate when an individual is not involved? Now, when you try to cut off that human intervention or personal intervention, when you're doing any activity, any sort of activity, you call it as test automation. Now, automation is basically to minimize your efforts, to reduce your human activities, also, to a certain extent, we say that to reduce the errors because we all agree that human is error prone and we can do a number of mistakes. But yeah, so automation will help you to be more precise, more consistent in providing certain results and at the same time, very quick, fast and more accurate. So yes, automation comes with all these kind of benefits which are assisted for any kind of activities. But today, we are trying to cover more with perspective of test automation. When you talk about test automation, 
lot of testing activities are being supported by the automation tools. But yes, we will be exploring that a little later when it comes to the detail of what kind of test automation is available, what kind of different levels can be automated, what are the pros and cons of that, and how you can decide on automating any activity. So yes, it's really important to start from the foundation and the basic things that what exactly is automation all about. Now, when we come to the test automation tool, of course, we know that automation is something which requires uh, automation in terms of automating an activity without having human intervention. You just give some kind of instruction and you can automate that particular activity. But what exactly a trust automation tool? Now, of course, automation is done with support of an additional parameter, or I can say an environment or interface. And that's what is called as an automation tool. Now, of course, what you see on the screen right now, they are robots. Now, what do you mean by robots? You give them certain instruction and they do that for you. And the similar way, the test automation tool can also be called as a robot, where the examples are your appliances, which you use at home, or you talk about your gadgets, whatever you use, like right, even the simple thing like calculator. Your calculator is also an automation testing tool, or you can say automation tool. We just have to feed in with the instruction that what is two plus two and press equal to, and this automation tool will actually automate the calculation for you and give you the result as four. Similarly, if you look at more complicated appliances, which you use in your day-to-day -day life, you call them as also robots. For example, you talk about your washing machine. You fit them, you know, in, you close in the dirty ones and just feed in with all the instruction that I want the fuzzy one and probably give them for a time and you want to soak or not and how long you want to rinse it. And then, you know, you don't want to decide on how long do you want to run it for drying. And then you just power on or start the execution. And then the machine takes care of it based on your instruction. And exactly the same, any test automation tools does on the same principle. And that's what the basic architecture of automation tools are. That yes, they are built in such a way that everyone can actually understand the tool, how it works. You do require a basic understanding of any product before you can use it. Remember those days when you started working with smartphones for the first time? Of course, each one of us had a very complicated time to understand some of the options like where's the settings so where do you configure your email id or if you want to stop receiving notifications in android how do you set up that or you talk about ios yes so whenever you look into a new product a little bit of training a little bit of orientation is absolutely required to understand how this tool works and once you're familiar you can very well instruct your tools and your robots to do any kind of task for you. And that's what is automation tool doing for you. You give them instructions in terms of your commands or the language they understand and tell them, hey, look, you are here for me to assist me to make my job easier, simpler, and faster. So this is what my instruction is. Do you understand? Can you just run this for me? And let me know what happened when you interacted with the application under test. And that's it. You just run that and the tool will do all the operation for you and get back to you and tell you this is what exactly happened. And that's what an automation tool does. So test automation is all about running these kind of simple or complicated instructions and making sure that everything is happening the same. So yeah, that's what is more about. Oops. test automation. When it comes to the next one, here we are trying to understand what kind of tools are available. Of course, when it comes to understanding of test automation, the first and foremost thing is to understand why automation. Team, remember one thing today, that whenever you try to learn something new about any concept, any context, you make sure that you understand what it is and why it is. 
what it is will tell you the definition of that particular content or context. Why it is will tell you the logic behind it. And once you know the logic behind it, you can probably do you know, wonders with those concepts which you have learned. So when you talk about why automation, of course, there are a lot of such things which might not be beneficial or might be consuming a lot of time when you, being a human, try to do that manually. And of course, automation can reduce your efforts to a very high extent. And of course, may enable such activities as well, which may not be possible to be done when it comes to a human intervention. And that's where automation comes into picture and helps you to understand and automate such complicated activities. But yes, what kind of activities can be automated? So that's where we are trying to talk about the tools for automation. There are different testing activities, as you do understand. I do consider that all of you come back from a background of testing. You already know about testing, or probably you are a newcomer to get into automation testing in your career path. But yes, there are a lot of testing activities which does happen within the project and the organization, where a lot of activities are tried or you know expected to happen manually, but some cases it might not be possible. So we need a tool support at that point of time. But when you go back to Google to just see that, okay, I can procure a tool and start using that to minimize this. But when you get to the back to the Google, Google will give you a lot of suggestion. Hey, look, I've got these many automation tools with me. Which one do you want? And that's where you get stuck again. So it's very important for any individual to understand and realize that what tool is that you want for a particular activity? Because there are several tools for different activities in the market today. So here is an example of certain tools which are helping you to perform different levels of testing. Or if I say different categories of testing, we have functional and non-functional. And of course, we do have different tools again within that to support different other levels of testing. Like non-functional can be further detailed into security testing, performance testing, or API testing, and a lot of other things like that. So of course, we do have tools to support different contexts. Now, depending on the level and type of testing, we have a tool supported uh, environment which a user or an organization can make use of. So here on the screen, you see some of the examples. Now, when I say some of the example, the highlight on some. That means we do have a lot many other tools available in market for specific needs. And this is just an example to tell you that we have a lot of options in the market to do any kind of activity. So for functional testing, we have Quick Test Professional, which is now called as UFT, Unified Functional Testing. We do have Rational Robot, Coded UI, Selenium, Auto IT, and many more. There are hundreds of tools available in the market. You never know which becomes the trend tomorrow. And of course, a vendor list is also provided to you on the right side, which just gives you an idea that, okay, this comes from this particular organization, so it might be used for a reference and whom to contact if you want to procure one tool for your activities. On the other side, for non-functional as well, we do have a lot of tools to support our activities and perform automation testing, like LoadRunner, JMeter, Burp Suite, and Accentages. So yes, we have a number of things, a number of tools to support a number of testing. To further talk a little more about automation concepts, we do have something called as test automation frameworks. And any automation tool is actually popular for their frameworks. Now, we obviously understood that test automation reduces your effort, minimizes your activity time, and increases the reliability, increases the proficiency, efficiency, accuracy, a lot of other things like that. But yes, how is that possible? Is it just that you provide certain instructions and they do that for you? No, we do have some more special considerations when it comes to automating 
a particular task. We do have something called as frameworks where you can actually combine a lot of additional features of one tool, or probably two different tools together to make some more complicated task possible. And you call it as automation frameworks, where frameworks are just defined as that uh, when two or more things brought together can do disastrous thing is what we call it as automation frameworks, which maybe a single tool may not be capable of doing. Probably any particular tool uh, has a particular you know, benefit or say the orientation, okay, this tool is only for functional testing, or this tool is only for test management tool, or this tool is only for regression testing. But what if you wanted to do something simultaneously with that? then yes, these frameworks will help you to improvise your efficiency on the automation activities. And there are four basic, or I can say, uh, frameworks which are available with most of the automation testing tool. Again, when I say most of the automation testing tool, not all the automation tools support these frameworks. So you must be very much crucial in terms of deciding your automation tool. If you need any such uh, support, of any of these framework, you need to evaluate the tool before you can actually procure the tool for the organization or automating your activity. Right from the beginning, we talk about data-driven automation framework, which is actually to repeat a test with a different set of data. Now, when it comes to an activity, where probably a lot of time, you come across an activity which must be executed several times with different set of data and we call it as data driven framework so if you have a good understanding of how to write up a data driven framework then a lot of your work will be further reduced by using data driven automation framework so all you need to do is write up a framework flow like a test script and create in such a way that the data will be automatically picked up every time with just single set of instructions so just for example, what if you want to run a test on login page with 100 different credentials? Then you just write three lines of script, that is enter username as this, enter password as this, and click on OK button. And then instead of giving hard-coded values for username and password, you actually call the values from an Excel sheet or maybe an XML parameter or even from a text file. And that's it. You run the environment, run the framework, and it runs for all the set of data with the same set of instruction. Similarly, we do have keyword-driven automation framework, which is to drive a particular test using a unique keyword. This is very helpful when it comes to regression testing. When in regression test, we just make sure that uh, we don't want to run all the tests every time you make an update. So what if you want to run hand-picked test cases? not all of them in the right sequence. So you use keyword-driven framework. Similarly, you do have some more concepts about modular automation framework, which is for each module, batch test. If you want to run library frameworks, you can do that with help of modular automation framework. Hybrid automation framework is a combination of any of these framework put together. What if I want to do keyword and it will drive both? Then you can put together to call it as hybrid framework. Of course, everything comes with something good or something bad. But in automation tool, that's the most interesting part of it, that none of the automation tool has any drawbacks associated with it. Now, when you say no drawbacks, of course, each tool is created for a specific reason. Now, when you talk about an automation functional tool, it is only to perform functional testing. When you talk about a performance testing tool, it is specially created to test the performance of an application. If you talk about security testing tool, it is to test the security vulnerabilities of an application. So each one, as they have their own uniqueness for a specific task to be performed for an application, they do not have anything called as limitations because that's not called as limitation because they cannot do performance testing now, they are meant for security testing, and they are doing that pretty well. 
So they just have benefits, but yes, instead of limitation, we do say there's something called as risk involved in using any automation tool. And we will be talking more about that in the next slide. But before that, let's talk about some exciting things which actually encourages us to make use of test automation. So yes, the benefits of test automation include, but not limited to. The reason is, every organization may look at a product or look at an automation tool from different point of view. And as they have different perspective or expectation from the tool, they may have different benefits. But these are some of the common benefits which actually an organization can expect. So reduction in repetitive manual work, thus saving a lot of time for the organization, greater consistency and repeatability. That means every time you run the test, no matter you run it 100 times, it will still give you the same result, subjected the product is not modified. More objective assessments. Sometimes some of the analysis and coverage manually would be very complicated. So if you talk about static analysis tools or code coverage tools or code measurement tools can actually give you a better coverage in terms of you know, understanding how much code is actually covered in your test cases. Easier access to information about testing is to perform certain complicated work. Look at the example of performance testing. When you talk about performance testing and you talk about applications like Amazon or Google or Facebook, you never know what exactly is the count of users live on these kind of products at any point of time. And uh, I want to do a performance test if I'm creating something similar. Then I need to do performance testing. But is it possible to do that manually? No, because manually you, it's not feasible for you are probably not cost effective for you to have a hundred thousand user live in an infrastructure and then run the same test at the same time just to get that synchronization and hit the button at the same time to see if the application stays or crashes so yes some of the complicated levels are also becoming easy with help of the test automation tool for example performance testing now, when you talk about the other side of it, as I said, you, we do not have any limitations, but we do have a lot of risk involved, which may turn into failures of using the tool if ignored. Okay, these risks are only to be considered before procuring a tool or automating any activity into your organization. So if you consider them and try to eliminate them before, it's very well and benefiting to you. But if in case you ignore them, of course, it's going to result into disasters in terms of investing your money and probably ruining your entire project. So what are the risks involved? Let's talk a little more about that. Expectation for the tool may be unrealistic. You thought that this tool will be able to do this kind of job for you, but it's not able to you. So you got a wrong tool actually. So please evaluate your tool before you can actually start using into your organization. The time, cost and effort for initial introduction of tool may be underestimated. Not every time what you think is cost effective. So you must consider your internal budget and effort required or probably the time taking to understand the tool and start getting the returns on the investment would be well estimated. So do not underestimate that. The tool may be relied on too much. You may think that, yeah, come on, we got an automation tool now, and this will be really going to help us with everything, and you sit and relax back. No, you have to feed in with the instructions. You have to create the environment to support the tool. You have to create the configurations. You have to call the parameters. You have to prepare the test data, what my tool understands, and yes, there are still a lot of effort which will be required by you to help you to automate your activities. Remember team, when you talk about automation tools, it is just to automate the execution, not the preparation, okay? So yes, preparation is a different thing and execution is different. You're just replacing your manual execution with automation, not your preparation. And of course, automation requires more better preparation compared to manual. 
So it should not be relied on too much. Version control of test assets may be neglected. The tool, automation tool, creates a lot of log files and version controlling that is very important because version control is configuration management, which manages the history of revision or anything. So if anything is updated, anything is modified, that must be traceable to trace any issues. So relationship and interoperability issues are also one of the risk. Maybe you have two tools. One is test management and one is another automation tool, and you are still logging the test automation outcomes manually into a test management tool. And that is actually possible with interoperability feature, where interoperability says that data exchange between two different tools. And yes, if the two tools can be integrated, all your automation results can be actually captured and stored in your manual testing tool. So thus, sometimes interoperability, uh, interoperability features may be neglected and you are still doing some of the manual tasks, which can actually be automated. The tool vendor may go out of business. Now that's on the other side of it. You buy your product today and tomorrow the company shuts down. And if the company shuts down, of course, you may not get any kind of support on that. And that's where we always look forward to buy a product from a reputed organization or even you know, a well-defined or well-known product or organization in the market because you may need support anytime to assist you to do your activities efficiently. So must evaluate your vendor as well if it is strong or not. The vendor may provide a poor response sometimes. Maybe a lot of popular organization across the globe may not have a good service on the support side. So yeah, when it comes to personal life, you may manage. You say, okay, fine. Now that I have bought this product, I have to suffer. But professionally, I cannot because you have a deadline, you have an agreement, you have a service level agreement, contractual agreements, and several other things to deliver the product on time. And you cannot play around with those things. So it's very crucial that you do check that how well the vendor responds to you on that. Sometimes you try to make use of open source just because you don't want to invest a lot of money on your automation tool. So freewares, open source are very popular these days. But what if the open source project is suspended? That means no more updates, no more upgrades, and you wanted some to enhance the features. So yeah, you must look for those kind of things as well that if in case I'm looking forward to a tool, is it still going to be sustaining into the market or it might be called off any time? And the most common thing, which may come sometime, just like Windows 8, that a new platform or technology may not be supported by the tool. It did happen with a lot of applications that when a new operating system comes, they are not compatible with that. And yes, when your organization decides to upgrade your operating systems or environment, and then you have to check with your vendor whether are you also going to come up with that support to support a new platform or not. If no, then of course it will be a risk for you. So before selecting your tool, you do consider the benefits and the risk involved in the automation. Now, one last thing to talk about is how do you introduce a tool into the organization? Yes, these are for all those bees who are in the session right now and probably uh, would like to go back and look forward to suggest their organization to automate certain activities and uh, look forward to procure a tool from the market and then start minimizing their effort and increase their efficiency as well as productivity, which is a cost effective way to do the job. But yes, it's really difficult sometimes to understand how to select a tool. There are hundreds of tools to do the same job. What if I'm just talking about regression testing? I may have at least 50 tools in my mind right now that yes, there are 50 tools who can do regression testing. But which one to procure? What do I consider before procuring a tool? And is my organization equally responsible for that? Yes, it is. So yes, you do have certain considerations in selecting a tool for an organization. And what are they? Assessment of the maturity of the organization. You need to 
assess the maturity level of the organization, whether you have a well-defined process to adopt a tool or no. Because if your process is incapable or immature to procure a tool and adapt, then the tool is not for you. Sometimes when you buy the tool, your process may look for any kind of opportunities to improve the process, to fit the best use of tool. If you do not have any provisions to modify your process, then the tool will not change for you. It is actually the process which should change for fit the use of the tool. So you must look forward to any kind of opportunities if your process can be improvised to get best use of the tool from the executions. Understanding of the technology used by the objects which you are going to test. We say, for example, you're trying to test an application which is built on Java and you buy an automation tool which only supports VB, then of course you got a wrong tool. So you must evaluate the tools and your technology which you want to automate and look for the right set of tool for your work. Evaluation of the tool against clear requirement. Why is that you want a tool? Is it for test management? Is it for functional testing or non-functional testing? So if you have a clear set of requirement, do evaluate that, what kind of tools will be there to support you. Consideration of whether or not the tool is available for a free trial period, because we always evaluate a tool before we can actually procure by investing a huge amount. So we always look forward to have a free trial period to evaluate the tool with our application. If it does not do that job, then we will look forward for an alternative. If it does the job, we will purchase it or procure it. So you have to look forward if the tool is being provided to you for a free trial period to use it and evaluate it to finally procure it. Additionally, again, do evaluate your vendor because it is one of the risks. What if your vendor is not strong? Tomorrow he may not provide you proper support. So do not go for that because you have a project to execute and a product to deliver to the market. Identification of internal requirements of coaching. It's not always mandatory that your team will be so highly skilled that they know any tool in the market. So yes, when you procure a new tool to the market, a training and mentoring is required to your internal team. And obviously considering of pros and cons of various licensing models. A lot of tools are not open source. They come with a license model and you need to identify what is their licensing cost and how, how frequently we have to uh, re revisit our licensing costs and recurring cost on those kind of maintenance. So yeah, a lot of such things must be considered before you can procure a tool for your market. And last but not the least, we are talking about estimation of cost benefit ratio. What is cost benefit ratio? When it comes to doing any job right now without the tool, for example, if you're doing a job manually for X amount, then when you procure a tool with certain value, say Y, then your X amount should actually be reduced even after purchasing the tool with an amount Y. So the cost benefit ratio is calculated in that way. Of course, it's a detailed calculation where you say that this is what we are investing right now without the tool. If you just buy a tool worth half the cost of it and still have to do a little bit of manual effort to make that automation happen, then still we will have at least 25% of savings. And that's what you call it as cost benefit ratio. Now, putting it all together, the test automation not only benefits you in terms of certain basic activities which you want to automate, but also in turn helps the project budget and the organization practices to improve, also enhance your skills within your team or your team members and make them more efficient towards uh, being more productive, being more time efficient, and you know doing more job in less time. And yes, they also become more strong with respect to automation skills. So yes, team, of course, uh, a proof of concept is required before you can actually procure a tool. So POC is the activity which you evaluate the tool before you can actually procure. Additionally, I would like to add one other thing other than the presentation here, 
to all of you who are listening to me right now is that yes, if you want to become an automation tester, you need to learn any of the automation tool to start getting into the automation. Because I think right now the market is paying really high to automation testers compared to manual testing. So this entire webinar actually addresses that what is test automation? How it's going to benefit an individual and organization and how it's going to bring that life-changing transformation to move from manual to automation testing. And we do have a great set of courses to assist you to learn different set of automation tools from the learning objectives. So yeah, you are free to get back to us and let us know if you have any queries, any questions, any you know, support or suggestions which you need to move into your automation career, you are free to contact us. So that's all from here today, team. Uh, I think this session was really interesting for you to explore more about that uh, in terms of automation testing. Now I'm open to questions. So if you have any questions, any queries, you're free to drop your questions in the question panel and I'll be looking into that. So any of you have any questions, just drop me a text. I'm looking on to the chat window right now and I'll be answering almost everything one after the other. Yes, the session is recorded. Yeah, so it will be shared on the YouTube page of Knowledge Hut. Thank you. Excellent information, well articulated. Thank you, Rashmi, so much for that. Uh, we appreciate such feedbacks because it keeps us inspired to do a good job. Uh, there's another question coming from Manisha. Which certification is in demand currently? Uh, if you're looking from contextual basis, it is IST QB certification. And yes, we do organize uh, several sessions for that. You can contact us for more detail. And when it comes to tool, you have tool specific certifications. So you can look forward for any tool and get certified with that. Uh, can I get YouTube link for session? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, definitely. That will be shared as uh, you know the logistic details with you. Uh, in case not, Shruti, you can just uh, let me know what link it is so I can drop it here or you can drop it. Can you share the PPT? I don't think that would be <laughs> actually possible uh, because this is uh, a little confidential in terms of uh, putting it publicly available. But yes, you can find the entire webinar on the YouTube page. That is YouTube channel of Knowledge Hut and you can revisit the entire webinar for more details. Enables to see your contact details on the slide. So please stay back. I'm going to drop uh, my contact details on the chat window. So you will be able to find everything, including my LinkedIn profile, plus uh, any contact details if possible. Thank you so much. The session was great. OK, thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, please tell me your YouTube channel name. That's Knowledge Hut. I repeat, Knowledge Hut, which you can see on the logo in the right corner on top. That is the same name for the channel. Okay, I'm a beginner in automation tool. Which automation tool learning would be best to start with? Um, if you are new to automation, I would basically recommend you to go for um, Selenium or probably talk about what kind of domain you want to get into. If you are into security, you have SonarCube, and a lot of such tools which are specific to any kind of, but yes, Selenium will be something which is very good for you to start your career with, which comes with uh, a lot of functional basics and uh, regression testing support. And that's really great to start your career with. Which coding languages are mainly used for test automation? I think right now, a lot of languages are supported, including VBScript, Python. Python is coming trend. So you can look forward to explore more about Python. Um, you can also talk about Perl or Ruby or C-sharp. So these are some of the languages which are very commonly being 
uh, addressed these days. So yeah, you can look forward to these kind of languages. Do we have any automation tools for POS testing, point of sale, or retail ID? Um, yes, we do have tools, but uh, currently I'm uh, not sure. Probably you can reach out to me. I may provide you the details on that. I have to do a little bit of digging specific to the point of sale machines uh, to test it. But yes, we do have tools for that, that I'm sure about. So you can connect with me further to explore more with that. Which are the good tools for high volume data performance testing? We do have load runners, you have JMeter, and there are some additional tools uh, for different aspects, like one to test uh, the go-to meetings or Zoom calls. Yeah, so you need to, again, give me proper details in regards to that, that what kind of product you are trying to test, or else that load runner is the best thing available in the market right now to go ahead with any volume of load testing audience. Um, now the one, which automation tool is considered the best in the market today, which is used by most of the companies? Again, we do have wide varieties of uh, automation tools, which uh, any organization is using. But yes, it all depends on what requirements you have. Is it for functional, non-functional, or test management? So yeah, you need to be more specific when it comes to the understanding of that. How much stream will be relevant to years down the line? Okay, yeah, I think everything is going to be automated. So you must start starting uh, preparing on the automation side and start looking forward to build your career in automation because most of the manual task is going down and most of the automation is coming up. So Vital, you can actually look forward to upgrade yourself with automation. I'm an associate test manager. I have 12 years of experience in manual testing. How can I move forward in automation? Okay, I think that's again the same thing which I addressed uh, Vittal uh, recently that uh, you may start uh, start working with Selenium, which is one of the simple and easy tools to start your career with functional testing. And if in case the manual was from the, some of the non-functional side, then look for a specific non-functional tool, which will give you a more better respect to you know, continue your career with your relevant experience. So yeah, we do have a lot of such things to assist you, but yes, Selenium is quite simple and easy to start your functional automation career, and uh, you may not have more challenges in terms of getting started. But yeah, after that, you can look for more complicated tools as well. Um, how does the understanding of automation tools connect with DevOps and how much understanding is important at the management level? Uh, coming to DevOps concept, of course, uh, it requires a little bit of additional understanding in terms of CI and CD tools, that is continuous integration, continuous developments, and running uh, test frameworks from an external tool like you talk about Jenkins and then integrating with GitHub, to automatically you know, merge your codes and do further testing on that. So yes, of course, you need some additional learnings when you want to do automation in DevOps environment. So that would be an additional thing which you would need to do uh, with your preparation on automation. Thank you so much for your comments, team. It was really a pleasure to connect with you. Um, thank you so much. Tosca is one of the automation tool. Is it commonly used? Yes, it's trending now. It's coming into the market and majorly it is supporting Salesforce automation, which was actually a little complicated earlier. And most of the things are being moved into Salesforce environment. So it's actually quite beneficial for you know organization to adopt Salesforce and also test Salesforce. What is the difference between automation test and automation development? Okay, automation development is about creating uh, the infrastructure, the script, the framework is what you call it as automation development, because you need to have a lot of preparation work to automate anything. And obviously the test automation is to run that. Now you want to execute that test, you call it as test automation, whereas test development is to prepare the infrastructure. 
When you get into the details of test automation, you would find that we do have test automation architecture, test automation solution, and they have several layers of it, like environment layer, adaption layer, parameters, and constraints, configurations, a lot of things in detail. So yes, when you start your career with automation, or at least you're learning with automation, you may get all the answers with respect to the detail of that. So please look forward to understand and explore a lot of details. Does to learn automation testing development background is must? Okay, does to learn automation testing development background is must? No. When you talk about development, it is about coding. When you talk about automation, it is called as scripting, where scripting is different than development. But yes, a prerequisite or basic foundation of programming knowledge would be very benef beneficial. If you have good understanding of simple programming like C or C++, it will be easy for you to adopt automation skills. But if you are completely new to programming, that means you never tried that before because testing is a very interesting domain and we actually entertain people from any background. So yes, people are there from commerce background in testing, people are from arts background and they are doing testing, people have upgraded themselves. But yeah, may have that you do not have any understanding on programming at all and you are only doing manual testing right now. But yes, if you have a simple and basic understanding, right, how to write a program to add two numbers, how to write a program to just check for a palindrome, that would be more than enough to move into automation learnings. So yeah, it's not complicated, it's just simple. Uh, you have to have a basic understanding on some of the concepts of programming to start with automation. Is Python more popular than Java as an automation coding language nowadays? Yes, of course, I think no questions asked on that. Java is going down due to a lot of demerits of that and Python is coming back again into the market and trending. There are a lot of people who are looking forward for Python training with us and we keep getting a lot of queries uh, to you know, answer the you know, Python queries with respect to learning. So yes, and uh, the technologies are moving towards Python, which is very helpful to automate different and complicated jobs. So yes, Python is trending and Java is going down right now. So if you are looking forward to learn a new language, I would recommend go for Python, not Java. Neeraj, thanks for a session. All right. Do you have any recommendation for automating regression test for Microsoft CRM Dynamics? Uh, I think you can look forward to have a uh, Tosca, which will be helpful for you, Tosca Commander, uh, and you can you know, go ahead with automating such things. So that would be the best recommendation I can provide you right now. What would be the best automation tool for testing legacy system in a mainframe? Um, COBOL, okay. So if you want to automate these kind of things, you may have uh, your Selenium, which will be very helpful at this point of time because it's have now recently started supporting a lot of such protocols which are built on COBOL or PL once and uh, so on. But yes, additionally, you can also look into UFT, just perform a POC, which will be possible to give you because UFT now has moved to a lot of high extent things. It was already supporting Sybil, Citrix and many other platforms. So yes, you have two choices right now, which will be one is open source Selenium, of course, you may need a lot of configuration and additional components to integrate with Selenium to make that happen. But UFT will be another one, which is actually a licensed software. But yes, it will be possible to do that. Which is the best defect tracking tool in current market? I think uh, you can look forward to Jira or ALM. ALM is a product of MicroFocus, and uh, Jira is a class in, of course, you know about that. So yeah, that's the same for the test management as well. So there are two questions. Is is there any test automation tool for usability and UI testing? Yes, we do have tools, but uh, I would request you to quickly connect with me because I may have to uh, get the names because I do have pool of all the tools which are available in the market for different activities. But currently, right now, it's not coming into my mind. 
otherwise I would have given you that. Okay, okay, thank you so much. A lot of comments on that. It was my pleasure addressing your queries team. Great, just give me a few moments. I'll drop my contact details to uh, all of you so that you can reach out to me if you have any queries, even after the webinar. Okay. One thing for everything. I'm sharing my LinkedIn uh, profile link with all of you. If you would like to or you wish to connect with me to discuss anything further, I'm always open to address your queries and connect with all of you. So just send me an invite to connect with you and then you can take the chat thereafter. And you can always reach out to Knowledge Hut to ask for any further queries and get support on any of your uh, queries and uh, discussions. Is that? Okay, so now you would find the chat there with my LinkedIn profile. A lot of questions, a lot of questions, but I'm not sure how much time do I have still. Uh, which is the best effect tracking tool for Sean says, okay. I think that I've addressed Jira or this. Any certification is available for Selenium? Yes, ISTQB has actually introduced a new syllabus uh, to address Selenium certifications. So if you are one of that and interested to go for the ISTQB certification on Selenium, you can actually look forward to that because ISTQB is actually one of the biggest brands to certify you on different aspects so you may actually look forward to that so you can go ahead and reach out to istqb.org and visit their istqb certification links